vlog style podcast about knitting coming to you from Sacramento, California. I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've recorded, so uh, a little bit out of practice, but I have, just because I haven't been recording the podcast doesn't mean that I have not been making things. In fact, I've been very busy making things. Uh, and that's part of why I haven't recorded one in so long. I got a little overwhelmed about everything that I have to share. And I realized that the longer I wait, the more overwhelming it's going to be. So I might as well just hop down here and refine what I want to talk about. Um, on that note, I am, I've been reflecting and wanting to refine what I'm sharing on this platform. I started this funny podcast where I talk at a camera because I didn't know people around me who were as into knitting as I was. And in part through starting this podcast, I've met some wonderful people here in Sacramento. Yes, Sacramento has knitters. Uh, so I'm able to explode in excitement at people in real life. Uh, but I realize I also really value connecting with people really all over the world as well. So in this new year, I am dedicating, yeah, I'm going to dedicate time to record podcasts, ideally every other week. Um, the way my schedule works out, Mondays are a great day for me to sit down and record this. So. When I'm recording this, this is uh, January 28th, I think. Hopefully this will get up by tomorrow, Tuesday. Hi. <laughs> Let's just jump right into the knitting. You don't need to hear me ramble about why I haven't been checking in with you. Uh, my first finished object I am wearing. This is a sweater that I finished uh, in late December actually. This is the Contrast sweater. It's a pattern by Petite Knit, and I have made many modifications to this pattern. The yarn that I used, it's knit out of Le Gros Lambswell. It's a Biches and Bouches, please correct me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, uh, yarn that I picked up at Vogue Knitting Live in the fall. I held that Lambswell with uh, some mohair, some silk mohair, and it just has created the most lovely sweater hug ever. Um, I took a few pictures yesterday of me wearing this sweater. Hopefully I'll insert one here if I remember to do that. But the gauge that I use for the sweater is different than what she called for the pattern, so it required quite a bit of math to make it work. And I think I talked about this in my last episode, but the math worked. And I felt like a magician when I calculated the differences in my gauge and the desired pattern size that I wanted. Some other modifications that I made, uh, this pattern calls for using a contrasting color. I admitted that. I just knit it all in this lovely gray and instead used a contrasting texture. So I have a one by one rib and sort of the extended ribbing bottom where the other color would generally start for this pattern. Yeah, I love it. I love this shoulder construction of saddle, yeah, of saddle sleeves. That is a tongue twister. And I hope to make more sweaters like this in my future. It's interesting. I noticed this is flattering on me and I really like boat necks. I know this doesn't have a boat neck, at least I don't think it does. I don't know very much about garment construction. I'm learning, probably along with a lot of you. Uh, but those are two styles that are really flattering on me. So, trying to make more things that flatter me in the new year. Finished object. Love it. I will hopefully update my Ravelry page real soon with my modifications. Moving right along, I have another finished object. These are the underwing mitts designed by Erica Huser. These are a pattern, a, a popular pattern to make right now. I made them on my recent trip to Miami, Philly, and New York. 
you know, it's a lot of places. This is where we have a lot of friends and family living all those places. So we wanted to visit them all. Uh, and it's a great, <laughs> complicated color work probably isn't actually a great travel pattern, but it was great for me because I have horrendous flight anxiety. I'm working on it, going to therapy, but whenever I'm flying, I honestly just feel like I'm dying the entire time. Uh, and so having this really, it's not really complicated, but knitting where I need to pay attention was great to help take me away from the situation which I have no control, but to create something beautiful. And then I had warm accessories for the very chilly conditions in New York and Philadelphia. It was also fun to make these because when I visited, let's see, I visited String Thing Studio in Brooklyn General on my trip. Uh, people in the shop instantly recognized the pattern. There's this sort of like instant camaraderie that established when I came in. That, that was fun. I love this pattern. I recommend it. The difference, I didn't uh, duplicate stitch the contrasting color. These were already a little flashy for me uh, already without an additional color added. So I just admitted that and used the contrast color. I have been wearing these a ton biking around Sacramento. They're just the perfect layer to throw on because <laughs> it's like 40, 50 degrees here when I'm biking around and they provide a surprising amount of warmth and just enough for when you're biking around. You need a little motivation to hop on your bike and get out there. So I finished some other projects as well, but uh, I want to keep this episode short and sweet. Just the good stuff. Uh, so I'm going to work on to some works in progress. The first of which being, I cast on another sock. These are just simple vanilla socks that I'm knitting out of Trey Liz yarn I picked up at String Thing Studio in Brooklyn. I cannot get enough of this gorgeous colorway. It has sort of denim blues, deep orange burgundies in it. And it I bought this yarn and the needles at String Thing Studio because I realized I didn't have a good on-the-go project. Uh, as much as I love working on these, uh, I finished them, uh, so I need something else to cast on. So I'm going to knit these as socks with an afterthought heel, and I'm going to finish them before I cast on another pair of socks. Something I've noticed that I do is I love simple knitting in the round. Socks are such a great, simple travel project. Um, I also like to knit while I'm reading a textbook or like watching movies in the movie theater. It actually helps me focus. The problem is I now have probably five pairs of just tubes. Some people have second sock syndrome. I have tube syndrome <laughs> where I'm at knitting the heels and toes on my socks, which is silly because I absolutely love cutting in to the sock and picking up the stitches and making the heel. I guess I'm just like, ooh, shiny, I want to knit anything. So I'm going to finish these, and then before I cast on any other, other socks, I'm going to finish my other socks. I'm going to put toes and heels on them because I honestly need some socks. It, I can't complain. It's not that cold here, but I could use some warmer wool socks. And I guess I love these colors enough and I'm excited to actually finish it so I can wear these socks. And hopefully that will create momentum that I need to complete my other socks. Because right now I just got a bunch of snakes in my closet. Mm -hmm. Moving right along, what are my other works in project, progress? I remember the last work in progress I'm going to share is my brother's sweater. I've been 
watching any previous podcasts, you'll know I have been knitting a Timber Cardigan by Shannon Cook for my brother. And I'm not even taking out spiral yarn because it's really tangled. I have like this much left on one of the sleeves. And then I think I'm going to add toggles as a closure for the sweater. That's a recommendation that some other people put on my last video. But it's so hard for me to knit on this sweater. And I'm not sure what it is. I think it's in part because I just don't love the yarn. It's an acrylic wool encore blend. Uh, and so I may have mentioned this before, but this is my last ob obligation knit for a while. I may still make things for other people, um, but I'm not going to have other people pick out the yarn because I just, it hangs over my head and what I have, this project has been in the works since March and it's almost the end of January. That's just not cool. And it keeps me from knitting other things that I, I absolutely love and want in it. So <laughs> this is my bag of shame. By the next time I record, which I guess will be in two weeks, this will be done. I think that's it for whips that I'm going to share with you today. I have a new, as Kristen from Bull and Vine would say, a new rabbit hole that I've jumped down. And from this bag, you can probably guess what that is. I have started spinning. For my birthday, uh, my friend Rigel, who, she doesn't dye anymore, but she's the dyer behind Black Market Wool, she and her husband made me a drop spindle. And she took the day to teach me how to spin. And I love it so much. So I have a little bit of spinning to show off. I'm absolutely hooked. Uh, Let's see here. Oh yes, okay. So this is, this is the first skein of yarn that I ever spun. I hope you can see it because the light is quickly leaving. It's a mixture of, um, I think mostly Coriadale, but some silk blend I think is in here too. It was really so much fun. It's wonky and uneven, but I absolutely love it. What else have I spun? This is another, you can see a, <laughs> a brown and purple trend. Some other yarn that I've spun. Here's some more. I made a purchase from, I think her name is Spindles and Stitches. It's a UK yeah, spindles and stitches. She's a UK fiber dyer. And that's where I got this crazy color from. I, they're all pretty small, but I'm experimenting and getting my, what's it called, drafting style down. So I'm still so new to this. I'm so far just on a drop spindle. I'm thinking I would really like to get a spinning wheel. Do you spin? How did you learn how to spin? What do you wish you were told when you first learned how to spin? What resources can you throw at me? I am loving just playing around so far, but I'm ready to dive pretty deep. So anything you want to throw at me, please do. Uh, okay, so I did not spin this, but this was gifted to me uh, also by Rigel. And what I would like to do is hold, maybe not that, <laughs> but hold these together in something like the shift cowl or a night shift, um, the night shift shawl. I had some more finished skeins of yarn that I'm not finding right now, but okay, so some of those I purchased the fiber all over the place. I'm just really excited about spinning. Some of that fiber I purchased from Rumpelstiltskin, my local yarn store. Some is from Spindles and Stitches, and most recently, a ton of fiber 
I picked up at my favorite thrift store, Adoptable Goods. I went yesterday and they just had a ton of often labeled roving in all of these gorgeous colors, many of which were hand dyed, some of them were naturally dyed. I don't know if you're seeing this. The light is really going away. The sun's setting. I'm gonna have to make this quick. Uh, yes, I really lucked out and I think I got there's a whole nother bag in addition to this. I got it all for eight dollars. It's a pretty darn good deal. A lot of it's hand dyed, roving, a mixture of fiber bases. This is my latest. I've noticed that I've already gotten a lot more consistent in my spinning, which I worry is going to be an issue now when I hold this all together. Like some of it's super thick and chunky and some of it's looser. Have you knit the shift cowl? Is that pattern conducive to different weights of yarn? Let me know. I really appreciate your feedback. Um, so I think in terms of knitting and fiber content, I'm going to leave it there. And if that's all you're here for, bye! I'm going to give anyone else interested a quick update and talk about a few things that are going on in the fiber world right now. But first off, uh, I think when I last left you, my car was stolen, right? So my car has been recovered. It was essentially returned to us a week later. My neighbor found it at a parking lot really, really close to where we live, um, which is great. The car mostly wasn't damaged in terms of the engine, but there were some issues underneath the car and the inside was really gross. Um, so that was all late. November, we just got our car back from the repair place and it still smells awful. So there are worse things. I'm glad that I'm reunited with the car and it's incredible that it was essentially returned to us. But yeah, it sucks that the saga still continues. Uh, I am recording this after going on a wonderful trip to Miami, Philadelphia, New York. On that trip, I got to reconnect with old friends, see lots of family, and also make new fiber friends. As I mentioned, I stopped at String Thing Studio and uh, Brooklyn General. Those are both, you know, really impressive stores with wonderful people in them. Uh, and I also had the opportunity to meet a random knitter at the Brooklyn Museum. I spotted her in line in front of me at the coat check and I totally could tell that she had an Agnes sweater. I was trying to figure out how I could approach her and talk about it in the least creepy way possible. So I just went up and asked her if she knew her sweater. Turns out her name is also Jill. Uh, so we <laughs> connected and bonded over knitting and just what a funny small world we live in. Uh, what else? I guess I'd like to end uh, discussing the discussion that's going on on social media. Essentially acknowledging that uh, the knitting community is an extension of the world beyond it and that racism persists in our world and um, this has been something that I've been thinking about for some time. I've been very uncomfortable about the fact that um, I do a lot of work on racism, particularly in the context of education and examining how I can bring anti-racist practices to my classroom and how I can continue to examine the ways that I perpetuate white supremacy. So I am just so grateful for those knitters who have brought light to this issue and shared devastating stories 
which yeah I guess racism persists I I am by no means an expert on this at all I am uh, here learning alongside you but I guess I just want to recognize the fact that I have been silent about these issues on this platform in the past and I apologize for that and I am going to do better and I'm just uh, really grateful for the work that unfortunately has come out of a lot of pain for people of color and black and indigenous people of color um, to bring these issues to light but uh, I guess I it's hard for me not to tear up even talking about it, but I want to reiterate the words that I think her name's Creative Cece said on the subject. Knitters are amazing. And I don't think by any means we are going to solve racism. Like, I'm not delusional. But I do believe that we can have a ripple effect. And we have enough of a shared enthusiasm and experience and a patience that I hope uh, that we can have these conversations and examine our biases and have a ripple effect outward from the knitting community. That's my hope. On that note, um, thank you so much. Oh, this is so soft. Thank you so much for checking in with me again. Uh, the sun is essentially set. I hope you can still see me. And uh, yeah, thanks as always for checking in. Let me know if you have spinning resources. There is something called Farm Day at uh, Meridian Jacobs Farms near Sacramento, and I'm thinking I might get a fleece. Give me resources about that. I've been watching some of uh, Bread to Men's videos. She spins and has walked through a lot of her wool processing techniques. But yeah, just throw it all at me. Yeah, thank you so much. Happy knitting. Take care.